What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're going to be doing another first shot. Now I got quite a few guns coming down the pipeline for you this summer. Uh, even some guns that are probably going to be more popular than this particular gun, but the reason why I went with this one first is because I really want to shoot this. I'm a big fan of Beretta, I'm a big fan of them all the way back from Die Hard, Lethal Weapon. The 92 is one of the most iconic guns that has ever came around the silver screen, let alone the entire firearms market. The Beretta M9 served in the US military for a long, long period of time, from the 80s all the way up into very recently. Uh, some are still incorporated, obviously. This here is the Beretta 92X FR. This is the full-size version of the new Beretta 92X, the updated version of the M9 or 92. Before we get into this, I wanna mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. It's because of you I can afford guns and uh, gear and ammo and all that stuff. I appreciate that. I picked this gun up with the uh, patron dollars of my local Shields here, and uh, thanks to my buddy Blake for uh, talking me into getting this. Also, I want to mention a local shelter in Ames, Iowa that I like to support. Uh, both the links to the patron and to the shelter are in the description. I'd really appreciate it if you would go down there and click the link to the uh, shelter at least and donate to those kids. They could use your support and a couple bucks goes a long way. We also have a sponsor for this video today, and that sponsor I'm actually pretty proud of. It's actually LAS Concealment. Uh, for those of you who know, I've actually been using these holsters for some time. Even over a year ago when we did the uh, FBI test with the Scotto C2, I was using an LAS Concealment holster. The reason for that is because they're very quick, they're very easy, they're very comfortable, and honestly, they make holsters for guns that most other holster companies don't, like the Staccato C2 for that matter. Uh, they've got holsters for Glock, 1911, Beretta M9s, whatever you want. So I'd really appreciate if you guys would go over and check out LAS Concealment. Uh, the owners are super cool and the quality of the product, in my personal opinion, is unmatched. This particular Beretta M9 is the obviously full-size version, comes with the Picatinny rail, comes with a double single action trigger design for those of you that are not familiar with that. Uh, it starts out in double action here and you can have a uh, long and relatively safe double action pull. It will switch to single action and then you can have that nice crisp short trigger pull for the remainder of your shots. Also if you so choose, right away you can just fan the hammer back and then go straight to single action. The, the Beretta 92 series is known for its safety decocker. You can also uh, convert this just to a decocker. Uh, if you want to use a safety decocker, it's ambi. All you got to do is click down there and now the gun is unsafe. It will not fire. You pull it back off and it will be decocked and you can fire the gun again. So. There's some give and take with that. I'm not the biggest fan of the frame mounted safety. However, due to all the pros to the uh, 92 series, which we're gonna get into in a second, it's something I have a tendency to just ignore. And uh, the nice thing about these is the new ones are swept upright, so it's a lot harder to engage that when you're uh, pulling the safety to the rear, so no big deal. Also, you have the cuts up front here that you can manipulate the safety with if you so choose. One of the unique things about the 92 is gonna be the open top design, which does allow for, uh, in some people's eyes, some superior feeding, which is kinda nice. The uh, Beretta 92 had some, uh, had some myths about it being unreliable. Uh, most of them are reliable if well maintained. A lot of those myths came from the military with the fact they were using the wrong coating on the mags, the fact that they weren't uh, changing out springs, things like that. But if you buy one of these, I can pretty much guarantee you it's going to be reliable. It's got a really good track record of being reliable overall. Now some of the features that come on the new 92X that you won't get on the old ones are gonna be the high definition front sight with the blacked out rear. I like that a lot. It was one of the first things that attracted me to the gun. Also comes with new grip panels. It's got a small uh, flat one there that uh, I guess they were excited about. I'm not, I got the big bear claws, so I put the uh, surrounded back strap, I guess you'd call it on there, and it's got quite the good texture on it, similar to M&P 2.0, and then it's got some really good texture on the fore strap as well, front strap, and it feels really good and really positive in the hand. Also comes with a slightly upgraded trigger, a new fire control unit completely, and then it comes with a standard Picatinny rail as well. Uh, it's got a 4.7 inch barrel and an overall weight of 33 ounces with the aluminum frame. So it is an all uh, metal gun, however it's still very light, even lighter than some polymer guns you're going to find. 
Very durable, very long lasting, very proven platform with a few upgrades that I think make it kind of a must have. Uh, I'm a big fan of how this gun feels and hopefully it shoots well also. And for the price point of around $600, I think it comes in uh, right around the perfect price for an all metal gun that has the looks and the features of the Beretta 92. But with that said, let's go down and shoot it and see if it actually is reliable and accurate. All right, now another nice thing about the new Beretta is that it does come with three 17 round mags. So you have a little bit of extended capacity there with some nice base plates and it does come with three mags. I really like that. When guns come with two, you're kind of eh. You know, the least you could do is give me three. Let's shoot it for the first time here at 50 yards. We'll just see if the sights are on. And uh, if we're not, we'll move a little closer, print it, see where it goes. Or to the left a little bit. I'm shooting on his left shoulder. Now that could be my trigger pull. Okay. Now we're on like Donkey Kong. What about Diddy Kong? Mm, I'm not a fan. All right, we're gonna pop around our little MOA target there. It's kind of cool if you hit the middle, the head pops up, and then if you shoot the head, it pops down, and you keep going back and forth. Now we're gonna see what the Beretta can do about home defense distances. We're about 10 yards there from those uh, uh, two-thirds Zipsic targets and we'll just uh, do a little home defense drill. Trigger takes a little getting used to. It's a little longer pull than I expected. What do you think of that? You don't shoot bread. You shoot my M9 A3, but I think it has a better trigger than that. Yeah, uh, things that I like right off the bat. I like the sights. They're easy to acquire quickly, I felt like. Um, I like the safety up here away from where I hold the gun. Why is that? Because sometimes I ride the safety. Mm. You accidentally push it up, you mean, like on a 1911? Yeah. So the thing that I hate about it is the thing you like? Yes. Fair enough. What else do you like? Um, didn't feel like too much recoil. That's about it. I'm surprised you didn't say, because it's Italian. You're Italian. And well, you love obviously. Italy. I guess our viewers don't know that. Like if Jada owned a pistol, it'd be that. Yeah, exactly. So, I'm not exactly vibing with the trigger, which makes me believe that, you know, me shooting off the right shoulder earlier was probably a little more trigger control. So we're back here at 75 yards. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold center and try to really work that trigger and see if that works. If I miss the first couple, then I'll hold off the uh, uh, right shoulder again and see if that works. It's kind of a, you know, give or take, hit or miss type of thing. Saw it go down. Well, that would have been really good if I would have shot it on purpose. <laughs> 
So if I speed up, I jerk the trigger right away, jerk the trigger right away, and I miss. It's not the sights, it's nothing to do with the gun, it's me operating the trigger. If I do my part, solid trigger pull, sights on the target, it goes right there. Very accurate once I get used to it. It's one of the issues with shooting so many different guns, you know. You shoot a 1911, then you shoot a Beretta M9, then you shoot a Glock, then you shoot a PX4 Storm, or I shoot a double action revolver. It makes you good at adapting to firearms, but it does take a minute. And with these first shots videos, we do about 100 rounds. We did about 120 just now. And uh, sometimes that's enough to adapt right away, sometimes it's not. Hitting at 75 yards is pretty respectable, although I feel like with a little practice, I can do a little bit better than that. So for the thousand round review, we're definitely gonna bust this out a little bit longer. And uh, there's a lot of things that are going on that I really like about this gun. Now, the first thing I like a lot is gonna be the sights. The sight picture on this is definitely better than a standard M92, uh, or sorry, 92. Uh, the uh, uh, front cuts are classic, I love those a lot. I like the pick rail, it looks mean. Um, the grip though is my favorite thing. Obviously, it's very uh, ergonomic and it's very grippy, which I like a lot. One of the differences between this and my M9A3 is I've got the big old hoe grip on that, which does give me a little trigger reach. So when I'm in here in the trigger guard, what I'm doing is, is you see how far my trigger finger can actually fit in there. So it's this gun is not sized correctly for me. So I'm out here trying to use the pad of my finger, and then when I'm coming in, it's so much finger that I'm always pushing off to the left. That's the most common way people miss. It's trigger control. Most right-handers always push off to the left because that's just the way it is. Part of that is my trigger finger. The other portion of that is going to be not quite enough room for my support hand. You can make up for good trigger control with a solid grip. And towards the end there, I was developing my grip a little bit better. Again, I'm used to that whole grip on my M9A3, so I was trying to get used to figuring out where to put my support hand, and once I got her locked in there, uh, trigger control was obviously a lot easier because then I don't have to worry about it quite as much. Like I said, it all just takes a little practice. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad gun because I missed right at the bat. Obviously, I was hitting towards the end. I like the recoil and pulse. I like how quick it is. However, uh, one thing I definitely would improve on this is I would 100% uh, improve the trigger. Uh, it is a little bit heavier than I would like. Now, another thing that my M9A3 has that this doesn't have is like 2,500 rounds through it, which smooths out the trigger a great deal. Everything gets polished due to friction, and everything smooths out, and the trigger pulls probably two or three pounds less than this trigger is. Uh, also, guns are just different. Guns come out of the factory a little bit different here and there, and uh, some triggers are a little bit heavier, a little bit lighter than others. If you ever measured an average Glock trigger, it's anywhere from five and a half pounds to flipping 10 and a half pounds. And I imagine Beretta is no different. So I like the looks, I like the feel, I like the ergonomics. Uh, one thing, if I was gonna keep this gun forever, I would definitely fix is the trigger, which is not hard to do because the reason why I actually bought this other than just to do a review on it was because I want to send it to Langdon Tactical. I keep hearing about how awesome Langdon Tactical is and uh, I want to get their new red dot mount on this and I'll have him smooth up the trigger and I might have a little bevel on the uh, front of the barrel as well and then obviously switch it to a G model so it doesn't have that safety anymore, it has the decocker. Overall, I think it's a good base gun for what I want to do with it, but it just needs a little bit of refinement. Obviously, before we do the Langdon Tactical awesomeness there, we're going to shoot a thousand rounds through it and do a full review to give you the uh, review of the actual firearm as it comes out of the box. But I just wanted to alert you that this will not stay like this forever. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please buy your Oklahoma shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.